Today, I'll show you how to make colors pop in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for this image in the video description. The easiest way to make colors pop in Affinity Photo is to use a vibrance adjustment layer. This layer allows you to adjust the vibrance and the saturation of the colors in your image. Now, the difference between these two is how intense the sliders are. So for vibrance, as you raise it, the muted colors in your image become more saturated. So if you pay attention to the more muted tones of her skin and this green leaf, as I raise up the vibrance, you can see that they start to become more saturated. However, with the saturation, this is more intense because it increases the saturation of all of the colors, not just the muted ones. So the yellow in this image is already a bit saturated, and as I increase this, you can see how that just becomes a bit oversaturated. Because vibrance is more subtle, you'll use it instead of saturation most of the time. I'm going to bring this up. And if you do use saturation, just make sure you don't bring it up too high. So I'll just raise this a little bit. So that's an easy way to make colors pop, but I want to show you one more strategy that you can use to target the colors more specifically. So I'll delete this vibrance adjustment. And instead, I'm going to apply an HSL adjustment. Something I like about the HSL adjustment is that it has specific color channels that you can select and increase or decrease the saturation of each one. So for example, as I go into the red color range, I'm going to bring the saturation up all the way so that you can see what areas of the photo are being affected in the red channel. So surprisingly, the yellows are affected a bit because there's some red tones in there and it looks like the bright spots on her skin are also being affected. So I'm going to go ahead and increase this. And then I'll go into the yellows. I always like to start by really cranking the saturation so that I can see what areas are affected. And the yellows are actually affecting so much of this image. So as I bring this up, I'm just going to watch and see where it looks the best. I think that looks pretty good. Now for the greens, I'll do the same thing. So I'll just bring that up a little bit. And for the blues, it's actually really only affecting her shirt and a little bit of the sky. So you can decide how saturated or unsaturated you want her shirt to be. I'll bring mine to about there. Now, not every image has every color. If I go into the blue channel, you'll see that not much is really affected. There's a little bit on her hand and on her nose, but I don't really want blue to appear there, so I'll just bring this back down to zero. And for the magentas, I'm really not seeing any magenta, and that's okay. Not every photo needs to have every single color. So you can see that we were really able to customize which colors had more of a burst of saturation. And now you can see the before and the after. One way to really make your colors pop is to saturate the colors and also brighten the colors. To brighten the colors, all you need to do is apply a brightness adjustment. So I'm going to apply the brightness and contrast adjustment. Then I'll go ahead and add some brightness and some contrast. Now, right now, this looks way too intense. All of the highlights are getting blown out. But I have a secret trick that really helps when you want to brighten up the shadows without affecting the highlights. To do this, we're going to use blend ranges. So with the brightness and contrast adjustment selected, go ahead and click on this little gear icon. Now, I have an entire video on blend ranges, and I'll leave that tutorial linked below. But all you need to know for this video is right here we have a highlights node and I'm going to bring this down so that the highlights are less affected. 
Now, one thing you really need to watch is how intense all of your colors and brightening are beginning to look. Something that beginners to photo editing really like to do is overdo it because it's fun to see all the changes you can make. But in this case, I think I've really overdone some of these adjustments. So I'm going to lower the opacity of this brightness layer just to bring back some of the darkness. That looks pretty good. And then for the HSL adjustment, I think some areas are looking a little too bright. So I'll go ahead and decrease the opacity there. And after all that work, now you can see the before. And here's the after. And there we have it. Now you know how to make colors pop in Affinity Photo. If you want to learn more Affinity tricks, be sure to check out my free course in the video description, where you'll learn 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.